I think if anything, the picture is not a criticism of religion, but more so maybe society's expectation of women and how they should behave after motherhood. Hi gang, my name is Clara and in this video, we are going to be talking about the Rihanna interview magazine cover picture. So on the 10th of April, 2024, Interview Magazine posted on their social media account the front cover of the spring 2004 issue. It was an image of Rihanna in blue eyeshadow, red lipstick, and what looks to be like a nun's habit. Her neck is covered by white cloth, white material, and she's also wearing this loose shirt. However, the shirt is parted and reveals part of her cleavage and part of her shoulders. There appears to be a tiny cross on her left cheek that resembles a beauty mark. And I don't know if this is actually a tattoo of Rihanna's, but there looks like there is a tiny cross um, right on her clavicle, right here. This particular picture was posted on Fenty Beauty, Fenty Skin, Rihanna's profile, in, and as well as the interview uh, magazine Instagram profile. Confession dot dot dot. We're down bad for at bad gallery. Black heart emoji. Interview. Spring 2024 cover. So uh, Bad Gal Riri is basically Rihanna's Instagram handle, and so they're referencing her. A lot of the comments on this picture are overwhelmingly negative and critical of the posting of it. Um, they are saying that it is disrespectful to Christians. So I'm just going to read a few of the comments. This is highly disrespectful, shakes my head. Girl, you can get cancelled too, and now you are. Another comment says, stop mocking God. Another comment says, this is really tacky. Religion should never be mocked and used as a cheap marketing ploy. I love Rihanna. I love her music. I love her ambition, drive, and entrepreneurship. But this is a no for me. I'm neither Christian nor Muslim, but I have a respect and understanding for all religions and spiritual practices. This is not it, Rihanna. So it goes on and on, very similar comments. So there was one comment that did stick out to me and this one was in defense of the post. They write, an homage to the actress Malina Dietrich and a movie she played in, shakes my head. Y'all need some film history classes. Someone replied, this is the only role she could have paid homage to you know, as artists and creatives, there's always an intention and a deeper meaning behind our work. It's never just what's on the surface. Her and her team knew what they were doing. And the original poster wrote back, The deeper meaning was to pay homage to an iconic woman in one of her many, many roles. It means something to the people who know her work. Sorry that you're left out of that, that connecting dots that ain't even there. Someone else replies, this is still in poor taste no matter how highly literate you are in film and its history. It's not highly literate in anything. Malina is a literal fashion icon. That is obvious. It's only in poor taste to those trying to make a mountain out of a molehill. The other option would have been to admit that you all had it wrong and put your pitchforks down and apologize. But that clearly is too much to ask. Someone asked, what movie was it? So I, I didn't know the movie. I was totally confused. Um, don't know if my comment came through, but it's the devil is a woman. The religious sexist phrase used when men meet their demise by falling for the seductress who brainwashed him with her feminine wiles. There are some similarities in the way that the placement of the eyebrows, the thinness of the eyebrows, the way that she poses herself... Um, is, you know, trying to emulate Melina Dietrich's facial structure and the way the makeup was placed back in the old Hollywood days. Uh, the red lipstick with the kind of Cupid's bow, a little bit wider separated, um, the kind of bedroom eyes, soft bedroom eyes, and the kind of um, faux kind of 
curl bangs on the top of her head of her for on the top of her forehead. Um, Malina Dietrich famously had curls. So for some context here, Malina Dietrich was a German and American actress that was popular in the 1910s to the 1980s. And she was considered one of like the old Hollywood starlets. I watched a short YouTube video on The Devil is a Woman on the YouTube channel The Movie Vault by Rob. So please check out his video if you're interested to know more about the movie. The Devil is a Woman is a 1935 American romance film by Joseph von Sternberg, adapted from the 1898 novel La Femme et la Patin by Pierre-Louise. Starring Malina Dietrich, Lionel Atwell, and Cesar Romero. Have you no fear of death? Why do you ask? Are you going to kill me? I told myself there were only two ways out. Either to leave her or kill her. I chose a third. Asquale, this is Morinito, the bullfighter. It's an extraordinary pleasure. So, La Femme et la Patin translates directly into The Woman and the Puppet. The movie version of it didn't use that name, The Woman and the Puppet. They changed it to The Devil is a Woman. And the premise of the the movie is there is a woman. Um, she's a femme fatale. She's a seductress. And she kind of uses men as a plaything. She seduces one man and she seduces another all for her own benefit and amusement. That's just like the gist of the movie. So, um, and she is their downfall. Um, it's kind of like a cautionary tale, you know, if you if you fall for such a woman as a, as a man, as a heterosexual man, you are going to be screwed over, basically. You are going to meet your demise. So in the movie poster, Marlena Dietrich is leaning into her leading man. She's leaning into him and there's a line that says, Kiss me and I'll break your heart. Mixed in with the text of The Devil is a Woman is fire burning out of it and burning onto her and kind of like, you know, she's a flame and he's drawn to her and he's going to get burned, basically. But because of the flames, um, the the white outfit that she's wearing is is yellow in hue. If you notice on the poster itself she's not actually dressed as a nun she just has some sort of veil over her head and so I was a little bit confused as to the comment like why 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 is this a tribute to Malina Dietrich when she's not actually dressed as a nun and then I kind of dug a little bit deeper and in one of the scenes I don't know if she's trying to dress like a nun or if this is just simply an outfit that she's wearing that looks very much like a nun's outfit. I, I didn't watch the movie and I don't have access to the movie, so I can't tell you exactly what she's trying to do. Um, but yeah, there there's the nun imagery within the actual movie of The Devil is a Woman. Okay, so now we're going to go back to um, Rihanna's actual picture. Um... In my opinion, my humble opinion, uh, <laughs> I think they should have just done away with the nun reference. I think if they had just gone with a simple type of veil, it wouldn't have elicited, elicited? it wouldn't have invoked such a strong response. Rihanna posting this picture. She she doesn't style herself alone. She has makeup artists and photographers and stylists and lighting technicians. And But my point is this was created and curated by a fashion team. So I looked at the actual uh, interview from the Interview magazine. Interview is an American magazine founded in late 1969 by artists Andy Warhol and British journalist John Wilcock. The interview was titled Rihanna is Ready Co to Confess by Mel Ottenberg. Okay, so Mel Ottenberg is the current editor-in-chief of Interview Magazine and he is a fashion stylist and he styled Rihanna for a number of years. I was trying to see if she was really confessing to anything. 
she wasn't. She was just talking about motherhood and relationships. There was a top. They were talking about desperate housewives at some point and how her body has changed since her pregnancies, and how that affects how people style her in in shoots, like how her certain parts of her needs to be lifted and um, adjusted for the camera, um, and how she processes inspiration for me- her music and her her visual art. So he says. For our shoot, I was like, okay, what are the people missing from Rihanna? They're really missing the cuntiest, sickest smelling Rihanna red carpet looks. Then I started looking at the runways and I was like, there's no open necks. She's not going to like this stuff. I need a new idea. So there were a couple of the pictures with the open neck, but had nothing to do with the habit um, or this nun reference with a very messy looking blonde wig that does not look like it's been styled or maybe it has been styled but it's 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 looking disheveled it's looking deliberately messy and and unkempt and she has a product on her face loose setting powder that's sitting on her face that's not blended out her knees are bruised she has a bandage on her arm and she's wearing an oversized type of sweater blue um, rich blue sweater and that blue is in contrast with that yellow wig I think those two colors are in juxtaposition Um, she had posted this particular look on her profile and she typed she captioned it Literally how I feel in postpartum with two under two. So she's referencing that she has two children under the age of two years old. And this is how she feels. Not put together, disheveled, bruised up, um, tired, I assume. Um, Another thing to note is they were in Milan when they did this interview. I I assume that's also when they did the photo shoot. 3 a.m. interview photo shoot type of thing. Another thing that I noticed about this this picture um, from Rihanna is that it reminded me a little bit of um, whatever happened to Baby Jane. Uh, one of the characters, uh, I believe it is Baby Jane, um, she has a beauty mark on her face in a similar spot. Um, it is not a cross, however, it is a heart shape. It's a heart shape beauty mark. And it is also a kind of old Hollywood black and white movie. So maybe there were these inspirations coming into play. The makeup that which Rihanna had that was, you know, kind of disheveled and and not put together, not blended. Everything's a little bit messy. That also reminded me of the makeup on um, the character of Baby Jane. Um, Although not a literal copy of it 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 was just you know baby jane's makeup is looks insane so the la femme il a pantin was a french novel in published in 1989 and again this story of a femme fatale and men being drawn to someone um men being drawn to a femme fatale that leads to their demise Reminds me a lot also of another French novel by Victor Hugo, um, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I think that's a more familiar reference. So yeah, essentially there's a, there's a very odd portrayal of women or like an idea of women and, and, and them being seductresses and um, just men just unable to control themselves because they're men and they can't. I don't know. Look at now. Um, so yeah, in Hunchback of Notre Dame, there are... A number of men that are drawn to this 16 year old Esmeralda who is pretty and beautiful and young and sexy or yeah and and these men are lusting after her including a very pious type of uh, clergyman called Frollo if you've watched the Disney version you kind of understand a bit of the plot the book is a little bit different but the thread is there Beata Maria Oh, I'm so much purer than the common, vulgar, weak, licentious crowd. Then tell me, Maria, 
Why I see her dancing there, why her smoldering eyes still scorch my soul. I feel her, I see her, the sun caught in her raven hair is blazing in me out of all control. Like fire, hell fire, this fire. Gypsy girl, the witch who set this flame. It's not my fault. If in God's plan, he made the devil so much stronger than a man. If you have these urges and 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 you you can't be a clergy, just don't. I personally am not religious whatsoever, and I am I am supportive of the criticism of religion in a legitimate capacity. But at this, like in this particular photo shoot, I don't think there's any sort of criticism directly to be made. I guess if you stretch it a bit, you can think of it as uh, Rihanna now being a mother, she's kind of um, balancing this idea of being the Madonna kind of figure as a celebrity, artist, performer, musician, um, fashionista. The, the industry wants her to be sexual. She also wants to be sexual. She just used her, her, her sexuality as part of her brand. Now that she's a mother, she, there is a part of her that is expected by the public to be modest and chaste. Um, but at the same time, her brand has, has been leaning into her sexuality. And it also is part of what will continue to sell in today's industry maybe you could you could see it from that lens and see that clash so this duality itself is not very apparent um in the picture itself there there really really isn't any reference to motherhood in the picture in the interview there is a lot of reference to motherhood um and i don't even know if this is what the stylist was thinking or what rihanna was thinking this is just something that i um tried to try to come up with as as a possible explanation um, or analysis of this particular picture and knowing what I know about Rihanna. If my interpretation is correct, then it is more a criticism of society and what how it expects women to behave. Um, you know, if you're a mother, you are not allowed to be sexual in any sort of way. That part of you is over. You, you're meant to be sexual at a certain point of your life before you have babies. And then once you have babies, the sexuality has filled, fulfilled its purpose. And now you have to be modest and chaste. And it's not going to be easily understood in that way by the, the masses on an Instagram post with very little context. It's just a small caption that picture just has more of the potential to offend people than it does to to make people think um and maybe the maybe the stylist and rihanna themselves don't really care whether people get it or not the backlash itself is emblematic of society's lack of nuance or wanting to understand nuance personally i think there could have been a way to kind of use that message if that was indeed the intended message um but um kind of reel back the offensiveness of things by replacing the habit with just a veil just uh not not a bridal veil but um kind of a lace type of wimple that which is also kind of like a reference to i don't know modesty perhaps um, and then the contrast with that, the, the makeup and perhaps a little bit more of a revealing um, shoulder or something like that. Yeah, just to, to, to exclude the use of a uh, symbol of religion in that and, and to do away with the whole cross thing on the, the, the cheek. If you want to be critical of religion specifically, and use, you know, blatant religious symbolism, there needs to be a strong message behind it, a really strong message. You are actually in the minority if you think Marlena as a fashion icon, 
and Rihanna as another fashion icon wouldn't have a large enough audience who wouldn't recognize the homage. RuPaul's Drag Race and other big queer, queer spaces reference her constantly. But when you have social media baiting the religious crowd, no one starts to think outside of themselves and their own experience. In RuPaul's Drag Race, um, the, the performers consistently use a lot of religious imagery in their drag looks. And typically, it's a religious imagery um, in, in conjunction with sexuality and something that is considered taboo and forbidden. I think the reason why this is so common in queer spaces is because a lot of members of the queer community have been on the receiving end of ridicule and ostracization and um, condemnation by people in organized religions. I think it's it's a pushback towards that. Also, if you think about the hypocrisy of, let's say, the Catholic Church um, in terms of protecting the clergymen who have sexually abused minors um, and the cover-up that they, they engaged in, um, I think that a lot of resentment towards organized religion is where it stems from. Right now, you know, everyone for Easter, it's going to be an interesting Easter for the Pope. Everyone else is hiding eggs, he's hiding priests. Yeah, right. <laughs> find the pedophile, find the pedophile, find the pedophile. Where's the pedophile? Find... There we go, pull him around, pedophile, pull him around, pedophile, pedophile, pedophile. Oh, there he is, here's $100,000. Replace the pedophile, replace... <laughs> And I don't think that this picture is a particularly strong criticism of anything religious. Anyway, that's just my interpretation. So yeah, I'm interested to hear what you think. Are you religious? Do you have very strong feelings towards this image? Um, do you have another perspective of how this image could be interpreted? Is this simply using religion to clickbait? Is this that? Is this that for you? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching. If you're interested to see more from me, consider subscribing and liking this video. So that's it for me and ciao for now. <laughs> anyway, when I was trying to recreate kind of the vibes of this poster or picture, um, I used a yellow cloth over my head. It's actually a kabaya. I don't have fancy lace veils to wear on my head. So <laughs> I just made do with whatever I had. Um, so what I used was this. This is a this is actually a kabaya and it has some detailing on the edges and I thought that would be nice to you know drape over the head kind of in this manner just to recreate that vibe. Anyway, uh sorry. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Find me a find, catch me a catch. <laughs> <laughs>